Today we're talking with Nick Sakella, a full-time guide who spends all winter long chasing down walleyes on the ice, and he's gonna share with you his number one mistake that he sees anglers make out on the ice consistently when they're chasing walleyes, and that is jigging cadence. Now, obviously, the better your jigging cadence is, the more walleyes you're gonna catch, so he's gonna break down his four favorite lures and how he uses them on the ice, specifically when there's fish on the graph and when there's fish not on the graph, how he jigs them, and first things first, we're gonna start things off with the tried and true go-to buckshot spoon. The first thing that I always see starting off with dropping the, the jig down is people working it way too close to the bottom. When that jig's only a few inches off bottom, those fish aren't able to see it from far away. You think of a, a bait being worked just a couple inches off, you're not gonna see it nearly as far away as a, a bait being worked two, three feet off the bottom. So going from there, a lot of times people, I always see them doing this. You know, and sure it's probably worked before, but how I work my, you know, my poured metal spoons is I pound it. I'm going pounding it. You know, my line's going slack. I can feel that jig pounding. You know, and when I see a fish come into the graph, all I do is slow down, tighten up that quiver a little bit, but I'm still pounding it. I'm not, I'm not stalling it, but I'm still just tight, tight little shake, shimmy, and I'm raising when I see that fish. As soon as they make that decision to come up after that bait, it's usually a done deal at that point. Next up, let's get into minnow style baits like the new Rattle and Puppet Minnow. You know, this is something that's gonna be great for searching. You know, it's gonna be something you're gonna work hard and aggressive, and I'm gonna go over a little bit how I work that. First things first, drop her down. And especially with this bait, this is one of them that you're gonna to wanna to work high up in the water column, two, three, four feet sometimes off the ground. And when it's down there, you know, you're not doing, again, you're not doing the yo-yo up and down. You're popping it, pop, pop pop, 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 pop. You know what, that, that jig's just down there darting, flying around, pop, pop, pop. Once again, that fish comes into the graph, I'm just gonna tighten up that pop, tighten it up. You can slow it way down, but I'm always moving that bait, always keeping the bait above the fish and always just quivering it. You know, a lot of times you're not gonna fish this bait with a minnow head just because it can hinder the action, but there's plenty of times where I've seen tipping that trouble with a minnow head is gonna outperform just a plain bait for sure. But like I said, typically this is gonna be a search bait, a high reaction bait, and it's gonna be something that worked very aggressively. Now before we jump into the next bait, it's important when you're jigging to have the right tools for the job, so here's how Nick chooses the right rod for each lure that he uses. When I'm using the horizontal style baits, I like to have a little bit more of a fast action rod, a little stiffer rod than as opposed to when I'm you know, doing spoon fishing. This is a little bit more extra fast, a little softer tip, um, because when I'm running these heavier horizontal style baits, and I'm really popping them, if I have too soft of a tip, you're gonna get a yo-yoing effect on that bait. You want something stiff that's really gonna dart that lure around on there. Another important factor is using the right line. I personally like to use mono, um, or, or a, a low stretch mono, or even a floral carbon, but I personally like the lower stretch mono. I like how the line handles in the cold. I don't have as much freeze up as opposed to maybe a braid. Um, but this low stretch mono, I still have great feel. Um, but you know, when you're only using a 36 inch rod, I like that little bit extra stretch in that line to help keep those big fish pinned. Next up, let's look at flutter style baits, like the buckshot flutter spoon. So once again, I'm working this bait two, three, four feet off the bottom. And when I'm dropping it down, that bait's actually fluttering way out off to the side. And it's, you know, it's five, six, seven feet off to the side by the time it gets down to 30 feet. It's just kind of covering water. And when I, you know, I'm bringing that bait back, it's swinging back under on a pendulum. It's coming back under. Now I can start to see it on my graph. So once I start getting that bait down below me here, how I like to work it is a little bit more of a flick, flick letting that bait drop on a slack line and it's just flicking off to the side and penduling back under the hole. Flick, flick, flick. 
Now once that bait, you know, once you start to see a fish come in, I just go back, to, I'm not flicking anymore. I'm just coming back into my tight little pop, 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 little shimmy down there and that bait's just, just rattling and just flopping around down there. So I'm back to that tight little shimmy. Now most of the time that slow rise, subtle shake will be the go-to option for getting fish to bite once they're under your hole. But sometimes you gotta mix it up a little bit if you wanna get bit. So you know, on pretty much all these presentations, I'm working a more aggressive, higher in the water column, trying to get fish to come in to see my bait. And most, you know, a lot of times I'm always just going to a small shimmy and rise once I see that fish on my graph. Um, another alternative when you got a fish hanging around, it doesn't seem like he's wanting want that kind of action, just drop that bait down into the silt. Just let it sit in the bottom. Just give it a raise, sit on the bottom. Give it a raise and you know a lot of times when you're doing that kind of technique you're just gonna feel once you go to raise off the bottom the fish is gonna be on there it just sucks it in right off the ground so that's another little trick you can try when you know that shimmy and raise is not working the fish is a little bit more sluggish it's another little trick to try the last category of baits are big aggressive rattle baits like the rip and shad here's how nick likes to work these baits now this is gonna be a bait that I tie on a lot of the times when I'm looking for an aggressive bite, you know, peak times, morning, yeah, you know, your dusk time. And also a great bait that I use for locating fish is a search bait. Now this is a bait that you, you really work aggressively. It, it's just pop, 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 a, a lot like you do with that puppet minnow, or the rattling puppet minnow, but you're pop, 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 pop. And then once again, once you see that fish coming in, I go back to that hard shimmy, shimmy and raise. Um, but I like that pop, pop, pop. You know, I see a lot of guys doing the rip and you know, rip. Yeah, it, it creates almost too much sound in the water and it almost can scare off fish. How I like to fish it, like I said, is that pounding pop, 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 pop. When you get into that rip, rip, you can feel beneath your feet that vibration that bait's giving off. And a lot of times, like I said, it's just too much and it, it actually scares the fish away. Well, there you have it. Jigging cadences for a number of different profiles and baits. So hopefully these tips will help you put a few more walleyes on the ice this winter. And if you learned something in this video, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below. We got a bunch more awesome stuff coming from the Northland Fishing Crew. So until then, we will see you next time.